This is Hillary Packer. She's the executive vice president, also chief technology officer over at American Express. Um, I am so excited to talk to you today. I'm so excited to be here. Thank I you. spent a lot of my career yes. building trading systems on trading floors. So to know that I'm inside the Bloomberg terminal right now, yes. that's a treat. It's exciting. That's a treat. That's like a career moment. I love it. I love it. Um, when we were talking earlier, I mean, technology, right, constantly changing. It's hard to keep up, like it can be intimidating at times. But what you said earlier to me really stood out because one, it ties into the theme of today. But you said that you have to embrace continuous modernization because it's the best way to avoid disruption. Yeah. So what did you mean by that, explain? Yeah, think about it in your personal lives, right? Think about how many times years ago you were afraid to update your cell phone. Yeah. Right, and you thought, oh, this is gonna be a thing and it's gonna take hours and who knows, it might be a brick when I'm done and I don't wanna do it. But now how many of you just hit update? Yeah. How many of you just auto update, right? Now think of your software stack, right? The more you do it, the more continuously you modernize, the less risky it is and, and the less of a challenge it is. So we think about continuous modernization. And so we think about constantly and consistently upgrading and modernizing our systems. So we don't think of it as a one-time event that happens every 10 years. We think about a continuous investment in that. We actually invest 25% of our technology investment into modernizing our platforms. And something that's really unique about American Express is I know a lot of places we think about, okay, well, I got the one-year investment, but the project's gonna take me a few years. What do I do? We think in, in advance about that multi-year investment, and we say, okay, let's commit to it. Let's not say we're funding year one and then good luck in year two, but let's think, okay, this is a multi-year investment. Let's make sure that we're committing to the whole thing end to end. Double down, yeah. Right? <laughs> and so we think about that continuous modernization, and one of the key things about American Express is we built sort of a foundational technology layer. And that foundational technology layer is everything from security systems, frameworks, core infrastructure that we then build our modernized platforms on top of. And I'll give you an example of how that pays off. We have something called the Intuitive Ser Servicing Portal. So you think about American Express, one of the things we're really well known for, we're super proud of, is our customer service. Right? And we want to give our customer service agents what we call CCPs, customer care professionals, the best tools possible so that when you call in and you have a question about, about our products or services, we have a holistic view of our customer, 360 degrees when you call in. How do we do that? We brought together 17 different legacy platforms into a single platform called the Intuitive Servicing Portal, a single pane of glass for our CCPs. And it's built on this foundation of reusable, scalable, modern technology. And that, so, okay, that's cool, right? But what that allowed us to do because of the reusability of it is we were able to launch the Intuitive Servicing Portal in six months, where normally and, and traditionally a project like that would take 18 to 24 months. Wow, big difference. Yeah, exciting. It is, it is. Now what we're talking about, what's also exciting is everyone's been talking about AI, right? Implementing AI, but data is really the key to that. I mean, you have to have good data. So what's the process for that? I mean, that ties into a question we have from the audience about, you know, is this done in phases? What's your strategy when it comes to that? Yeah, it's a great question. Data is the holy grail of AI. It's the classic garbage in, garbage out, right? You can have the best idea for an AI platform, and if you don't have the data to power that AI platform, you're not gonna get anything useful out. Um, we were very, we're very lucky. We have a, a strong foundation of data within the company. Data powers everything that we do, every decision that we make, the way we personalize products for our customers, think about offers and how personalized they are for you. Um, and, and we have a large, a big foundation in AI. We've been doing traditional AI since 2010. Okay. Um, and at about the same time, we launched our first big data environment. And so we've been building on that all the way through. And that was a great foundation for us for Gen AI. But you think about phases, um, get started on data now. One of the things that's really interesting about Gen AI is that we probably all have a, a history of structured data and getting structured data clean and correct and accessible. Um, Gen AI brings in a whole new set of data, unstructured data. And you think about what that means. One of the biggest challenges with unstructured data is, is it correct, 
right? We have um, a use case that, that we're really proud of where we said, okay, we're gonna um, power how our customer service is able to access knowledge. Um, so we have a knowledge base that's been around for years. The biggest work went into cleaning up the knowledge base articles and saying, are they correct? When a human looks at the screen, the human intuitively knows very quickly, oh yeah, that article's old, don't click on it, we know that that's not the right answer. The AI has no idea. So the AI is gonna surface whatever is in there and you have to clean up that data quickly, right? The other thing about data cleanup that you need to do, especially with unstructured data, is accessibility, permissioning. That's big. Right, you think about um, AI is gonna be really awesome at saying, okay, I wanna write a brief about this project that's going on in the company and it has access to all of the data in the company. Right now, people don't know where to find certain articles, and so it may not have permissions, but it can't be found easily. The AI will quickly find all of that. And so even before you have the use cases, you can start cleaning all of these things up and creating a really great data platform, especially your unstructured data, that'll be key to some of the use cases that you want to power. Now let's get into some of the use cases. Where are you finding it the most useful? Yeah, so, so we, um, We've been on our journey for a couple of years now, like many of you, and, um, and we started with areas that are very common and very, what you read about all the time, um, customer service, right, yeah. and technology. Um, so in technology, I can give you um, some, some exciting data that we found. And many people are probably working with um, some kind of coding assistance, code generation. Um, we've deployed a, a coding assistant tool to all of our engineers, over 9,000 people. Um, and we're seeing great success with it. Um, we have, we, we survey our engineers to say, is it making you more productive, and do you like it? And that's one of the things that we found, and it's really important to us, is we don't just want to roll out AI to make it better. Mm -hmm. Better includes, are you enjoying your job? Um, and so our engineers are consistently telling us, we've been surveying them pretty regularly, they're probably tired of the surveys, but we've been <laughs> surveying them. But they're tough critics. They're, they're, yeah. they're very tough critics, right, and that's right. a great point. Um, we're seeing, um, up, up until the most recent um, feature that we rolled out, which I'll mention in a second, we were seeing consistent 10% productivity gains over 9,000 people, which is impressive, and 85 to 90% satisfaction. And engineers are tough critics. Yeah. So to get 85 to 90 percent satisfaction is impressive. Um, we've now rolled out a chat capability, kind of a talk to your code capability, and we're seeing the productivity numbers go up even more. Um, early data shows probably about 15 percent um, versus the 10 percent previously. Um, shifting gears to customer service, right. um, one of the areas um, that American Express is known for is travel. Right? If you're a Platinum or Centurion card member, you get access to our great travel counselors. Um, they're amazing. Um, we rolled out generative AI tools to give high quality and efficient travel recommendations, in addition to the specialized knowledge that, are, that our travel counselors have. Um, we've rolled it out to over 5,000 travel counselors, um, and they're, they're saying, 85% of them are saying that it's giving better customer interactions and, and better um, recommendations to our customers. I'm actually a Platinum Card member myself, and I'm planning a girls' weekend to uh, Nashville for a nice. friend's birthday. <laughs> and I'm planning on calling our travel counselors and, and putting it to action and seeing, and seeing you know, if it works and how it works. Seeing yeah. how great it is and yeah, seeing yeah. what kind of great weekend they're going to put together for me out of, out of the use of the products that we put on their desks. That's amazing. So how exactly does that work? I mean, so do you put, you know, I want to go to Nashville and I want to, how exactly does it work? Yeah, the, right now, it's in front of our travel counselors themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so they put in all kinds of, we've given them sample prompts that they can use yeah. while they're learning um, so that, so that you know, it, it takes a little bit to learn how to prompt the engines. Mm -hmm. um, and they, can, they, they supplement their own knowledge, because they're travel experts to begin with, okay. with the generative AI suggestions. You know, if you call in for, um, you know, I want to go to Rome, travel counselors are going to have a lot of expertise in Rome. If you call in that I want to go to Saskatchewan, they might have fewer, fewer experiences with that. <laughs> But Gen AI can supplement that, and that's an amazing Excellent. thing. Now, working with these two, so how do you train your workforce to learn this new technology? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and one of the things that's really important is bringing your workforce along. Um, you, know, you heard The Economist just talk about 
you know, well, how many jobs are going to be replaced by AI, right? And there's a lot of fear. Sure. A lot of people are like, hey, what's going to happen to me? So what we've tried to do is, um, is infuse learning all throughout the organization. So everything from self-driven learning. We have Slack channels where people are talking about, oh, hey, I, I read this cool article last night. Did anybody else read it? Or I tried this out at home. Who else has learned about this? Um, all the way through to learning days across the enterprise where we brought in um, external speakers. You always want to get that external perspective, um, as well as our own experts that can talk about what we're doing within the company. Um, in addition, we created sandboxes where people can experiment. Right? Um, you can train people all you want. Um, it's, it's, like, it's like learning a language, right? You, you learn a language, but until you travel and speak with other people in that language, you're not really sure how much you learn that language. I don't really speak Spanish. I claim to speak Spanish. When I go to Spain, I realize how little I actually speak Spanish. <laughs> um, and, and so, and so what, we're, what we do is we actually now are training people on the tools that we're putting in front of them. We heard on the earlier panel about embedded AI, right? Okay. AI that's starting to show up in the tools that people are already using. There might be custom tools that we're putting in front of people, and we're giving specific training on that. We, we did, with our engineers, we did this really cute thing. We thought, oh, they're engineers. We'll just roll out the coding assistance. They'll figure out how to use it. It'll be easy. And then the engineers were like, uh, can you tell me how to use this? <laughs> um, and, and we realized that we needed to actually do a whole enablement process, right. right? Teach people not just how the tool works, how to get the best out of the tools. This is a new skill. And the last thing I'll say on, on training and, and empowering is we, we chose early on to not have a core central team that's building all the use cases. Um, we, we want to empower all of our teams, business and technology, together to come up with use cases because they're the subject matter experts in how to transform their businesses using AI. And so we make sure that, that each of those teams understands and has the training so that they can then apply it. It's not like one team over here is doing all the AI work. Right. And that's the great thing about Gen AI versus traditional AI. It's really democratizing AI for the entire company. So is collaboration key to all that, getting different departments, getting everyone involved together? Without collaboration, you're lost. OK. Um, we, <laughs> we early, yeah, we early on created um, a Gen AI council like many companies have. Okay. And we thought from the beginning, OK, who do we need to really get to yes and get to success in all of this? And so we brought in a cross-functional team on our Gen AI Council. It wasn't just technology or just certain people in the business. We brought in legal. We brought in enterprise strategy. We brought in risk and compliance. From the very beginning, from day one, we all stood shoulder to shoulder and said, let's figure out how to solve this for American Express. And you're doing all this while trying to stay on brand, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, American Express just celebrated its 175th birthday. Okay. Um, there's not a lot of companies that have been around that long. And our brand is key, key to that kind of longevity, right? And being able to innovate over the years. Um, and so I think about AI in many ways as the brand protector, right? And we think about, as I mentioned earlier, we, 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 we've got a lot of foundational technology. That was one of the first things we did with generative AI is we built a common enablement layer that makes it easy for all of our engineers and all of our business folks that are building um, AI use cases to be compliant with our brand and compliant with our brand promise of trust, service, and security. And so that AI enablement layer has each one of our risk stripes gets an opportunity, whether it's privacy or information security or other groups to say, here's what I require in order to be compliant with, you heard in the previous panel about local regulations or, or countrywide regulations. How do we be compliant with that? How do we protect the data of our customers? How do we protect our own data? And how do we make it easy for people so that each one of the use cases doesn't need to build that individually? Um, and, so, and so that's how we protect the brand. And that's how we ensure that everything that we're doing is consistent with our brand because we build everything on top of this core foundation. And that's sort of our brand brain. Now, when you look ahead to the future, what are you excited about? Like, there's so many different ways you can go. What trends are you seeing? Um, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyone heard the word agentic? Anyone? Agentic. Yeah. So agentic AI um, okay. and the, the promise of agentic AI is, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's, it's having AI now work autonomously. 
right? We've thought about chatbots and we've thought about small automations. Okay. We've thought about transforming our business in these real-time interactions. And now think about agents that can go off and act on your behalf. Think about an agent that, that says, oh, you want to eat at that restaurant? L let me watch for an available res reservation for you at okay. the date and time that you want, and then book it on your behalf. Think about you want to go on a vacation. I'm planning this trip to Nashville, okay. right? Think about, oh, I want to buy the plane ticket, but only when it's under a certain dollar amount. And authorizing those agents on your behalf to see what's going on in the world um, and take action on your behalf, that's super exciting. That's, that's the world that's coming. Now, the way we think about it at American Express is we're excited for it. We want to bring these amazing experiences to our customers. Mm -hmm. um, we, want to, we want to power our great assets like dining, like travel, like our experiences using Agentic, um, Agentic AI. But we also want to make sure that we're protecting our customers and only ever doing things that are consistent with our brand and consistent with what our customers want. So that security element has to be there. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. What are, what are you worried about yeah. with it? Is that? Yeah, you have to think about guardrails, right? Yeah, you sure. think about yourself, like, do I want the concert tickets? Well, not at $1,000 each. Maybe I want it at this price, or maybe I want it only if it's in this section in these seats. I want to be in the mosh pit up front with everyone. No, I don't want to be in the nosebleeds. And so how do you create those guardrails in that kind of a foundation layer where you say, OK, here is how I'm going to instruct the agent mm -hmm. on what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do. And that's a new world.